You rock as always. And now for our Andrew Yoon Legend Award. Andrew was an early Circle member who was not only a journalist, he was making a card game called Divorce the Game, which eventually came out. But then Andrew died tragically in a swimming accident. So we miss him and we named our Legend Award after Andrew. Reggie, let's, let's begin. So it's time now to honor an incredible person who has done and continues to do so much for the games industry, my friend, Phil Spencer. I really got to know Phil as he stepped into the leadership role for Xbox in 2014. And whether it was at industry events or trade association meetings, we found ourselves talking about the challenges the industry faced and how our respective companies thought about addressing these issues. And we talked about the importance of culture in organizations and the power of having a range of different perspectives to solve complex problems. Over time, the conversations became more personal about family, and future aspirations. Throughout this time, Phil has been a champion. Yes, a champion for great games, experiences, and communities, but also a champion for bringing games to more people across the world and bringing positive change to the broad gaming industry. Here's more about our Andrew Yoon Legend Award winner, Phil Spencer, including two previous Legend winners. As an industry, we are most powerful when we come together, united by our common love for the art form of games. I think as far as video game CEOs are concerned, when Phil Spencer says that he likes video games or that he plays them, I actually believe him. What is there to say about Phil Spencer? He's the ultimate, sorry from the bottom, now we're here story. Goes to Microsoft in 1988 as an intern, working on things like Encarta. Remember CD-ROMs? Yeah, those used to be a thing. Phil Spencer has spent almost 35 years working at Microsoft on products as varied as Encarta and Phantom Dust. But of course, it's over the past decade or so that he has truly made his influence felt across the entire game industry. What I appreciate about Phil Spencer is that he thinks like a gamer. If something isn't up to expectations, he's willing to admit it and do what he can to make things right. One thing I really like about Phil Spencer now that I'm learning more and more as a student is that when you get into the industry, you very quickly learn that a lot of the big wigs, as I would say, don't really play games. But Phil Spencer, he knows what he's talking about. His mission is to bring video games, interactive entertainment, to anyone and everyone on the planet who might be interested in them. His tenure at Microsoft has been defined by that project, to bring video games to more and more people. Through it all, he's always been a loud, passionate champion for gamers. Not just for the gamers, for the people who create games. Whether you hear stories of him playing Ultima Online back in the day, or him showing up on stage in a Battletoads shirt, uh, there was just something about the energy that he brought and the energy and excitement that he brought with him everywhere he went. And there was just like, like, wait a minute, is the person in charge of Xbox actually a gamer? Since we're here tonight honoring Phil Spencer, it would be great if we could say that he kind of invented the metaverse. Now we can't really say that, but he was instrumental in Microsoft's acquisition of Minecraft, which is really kind of a proto-metaverse. Now that happened way back in 2014 for $2.5 billion. And you may not believe this now, but back in 2014, $2.5 billion was actually kind of a lot of money. The legacy of Minecraft at Microsoft and Phil Spencer is all about unifying platforms. It's about honoring creation and persistent universes. 
he brought like a new energy back to, to back to Microsoft and back to Xbox. Halo is one of the most iconic franchises in gaming history. Master Chief is one of the most recognizable characters on the planet. I mean, who doesn't have stories of playing Halo in their dorm room all throughout college? But the Xbox business that Phil Spencer built, it's all about respecting players and respecting creators. Community has always been the foundation of any gaming console. Phil Spencer and Xbox have always continued to innovate that field. And no better is that seen, in my opinion, than the creation of the adaptive controller. And of course, arguably Spencer's most successful initiative has been Xbox Game Pass, which has completely changed the way people consume games. I would not be as big of a Monster Hunter fan as I am to this day, if not for it being on Game Pass come 2018. So I'm of course thankful that Phil Spencer is the reason for a lot of what Game Pass has to offer. Uh, we had an Xbox at home when I was growing up and my brother basically never let me play it. <laughs> We'd been in an all Nintendo family before that and Xbox really changed the game for us. Without Halo, there wouldn't be a legacy of taunting your enemies with a very, very specific taunt involving tea. What is the legacy of Minecraft and Phil Spencer's acquisition of it? I just heard that Minecraft videos have been streamed more than one trillion times on YouTube. It's essentially open, it's cross-platform, it's an antidote to the walled garden ecosystems that everyone else spends all their time trying to build. Phil Spencer has always kept one thing clear. Gaming is supposed to bring us together, not push us, to push us apart. And that's why he's deserving of this Lifetime Achievement Award. You may know Phil from Minecraft, Halo, and Forza, but he's been involved and created so many more games. And tonight I want to congratulate him on earning his Andrew Yoon Legend Award this year. Combined, these programs have reduced Microsoft's reliance on selling boxes that cost hundreds of dollars just so people can play games, and they've reduced people's barrier to entry in order to get into video games. Phil, I, I went down this awesome rabbit hole when researching your early life, and I found that you grew up in a really small town called Ridgefield, Washington, and uh, you played soccer there, and, and, and were a sputter, which is kind of the character of uh, all things sports in Ridgefield. And I also noticed that sputter character is a lot like Sal's sputter in Cuphead, so I just wondered if um, someone from the Cuphead team was actually growing up in Ridgefield or it was a coincidence. But I, I wondered if it was that small town essence that led you to stay so long at Microsoft, maybe it was a, a loyalty that you maybe only get in small towns these days. Congratulations, Phil. It is great to see you being honored in this well-deserved way with this award. Um, I've uh, worked in the same circles as Phil for roughly 20 years. And in that time, I can tell you, he has always been a man of his word, a very outstanding character and someone who believes deep down in doing what's right for games and gamers and developers all around the world. So I want to say thank you to Phil for all your years of hard work and support. And I'll tell you one little story. I once tweeted um, about Judas Priest. Well, I many times have tweeted about Judas Priest, but once I did it, um, and within seconds, Phil Spencer replied with another reference to Judas Priest. And so what that tells you is, first of all, uh-oh, Phil Spencer is following me on Twitter. And secondly, Phil Spencer is an unapologetic metalhead which is all you need to know about him. Trustworthy to the core. So, with that being said, congratulations, Phil. Hi, Todd Howard here at Bethesda Game Studios. I want to congratulate you, Phil, on the Andrew Yoon Legend Award. So well deserved uh, for all you do and all you've done for the billions of gamers around the world and those of us who create the games. So it's really not just a congratulations on behalf of everybody in the industry, it's a thank you. Thank you so much for all you've done for us, Phil, and I know there are bigger and better things ahead for you and Xbox, uh, and I can't wait to see them, and mo more importantly, play them. <laughs> congratulations on the Legend Award, Phil. So thank you, Phil, for 30 plus years at Microsoft, 
always thinking about the next big thing, and congratulations on your award. Congratulations, Phil Spencer, on earning this Legend Award. I'm more than happy to say congratulations to Phil Spencer for winning the Legend Award. You full well deserve it. Phil, congratulations on receiving the Andrew Yoon Legend Award. Thank you, Phil! But I think also there is a, a trend with our Legend Awards. It certainly, like Reggie, there's an empathy you have. You talk a lot about joy in games and wanting the consumer to have pure fun while player playing. So I think that all goes back maybe to that small town feeling that you have an empathy in you like Reggie does, like some of our other Legend Awards winners have. So perhaps that's part of the reason in addition to being a smart businessman is why you have thrived at Microsoft. Whatever the case, it's been decades and there have been so many games as our interns have pointed out and our members have pointed out. So I just wanted to say, Phil, congratulations on getting our Andrew Yoon Legend Award. Enjoy it and enjoy your continued tenure at Microsoft. So please give a big New York welcome to my good friend, Phil Spencer. Thank you. This award is particularly meaningful given the awesome history of previous recipients, many of whom have been sources of inspiration, feedback, camaraderie along the journey of my career. I know I speak on behalf of all of us when I say that the 2021 and 2022 recipients of the Andrew Yoon Legend Award have given us so much joy over our lifetimes and certainly their work sustained us all through the pandemic. I feel sad that we weren't able to celebrate in the room together. So please join me now in finally celebrating them in person, us here in person, Hideo Kojima, Jerry Lawson, Brenda and John Romero, and Tim Schaefer. There have been so many moments of wonder in my career, and certainly this great honor of receiving the Andrew Hume Legend Award is one of them. My sincere thank you to the New York Critics Circle, to my team, my family, and all of you. And most of all, every single player around our, the world who has found joy in what all of us here do, building worlds for others to discover and delight in. I've been working in the gaming industry for a long time. And well before that, I was a player and a fan of games. Back in those days, as a kid, we would save up every penny from our allowance to buy a new game that we probably chose based on the picture on the front of the box. <laughs> we knew that this was going to be the one game we got to play for the next six months, maybe even a year. We hope we picked the right one because we were all about to get to know that game extremely well. With that one precious game, you were all invited into a new world. A new world that was created with groundbreaking engineering work, innovative artistic vision from the game designers and developers behind that cartridge. Holding that cartridge for the first time was a rush of excitement and anticipation, and playing it, pure and utter joy. Not just because we owned a cool thing, but because of the experiences we would have with that game and the community. We didn't just play with family and friends. We talked about it, obsessed over it, we laughed about it, and sometimes cried over it, reliving our best and worst moments together. Gaming was and is about this very echo effect of joy. Today, there are so many games, more than ever before, available to more players than ever before. But also, 
it can feel like there is more despair in the world, a steady stream of bad news. With the ongoing leapfrogging from crisis to crisis, it feels to me that that joy I experienced as a child has become much more elusive for us for all to find, more of a guilty pleasure. It feels like today, seeking joy is an act of defiance. Yet, yet today as creators, as leaders, as world builders, our greatest responsibility to ins is to inspire and invite joy. Each one of the hundreds of titles that players have at their fingertips today and tomorrow is a calling card for joy. Halo, God of War, Vampire Survivors, Peppa the Pig, big games, small games, mobile games, indie games, each one is designed to deliver an infusion of joy in the midst of our lives. To give us so much joy, people want to talk about it, to share it. We, all of us here today, all of our teams around the globe, we are all part of creating this echo effect of joy. Our creators who bravely and intentionally release their visions to the world, particularly in the current culture of criticism and cancellation. Our players who bravely and intentionally carve out time for our games to invite, rest, and rejuvenate their lives. And business leaders, we are called upon to have the courage to protect and nurture this collective joy. We are called on to incubate these experiences, create them, and grow them to seek and surround ourselves with a multitude of perspectives, to honor our differences across experiences and geographies, and to practice empathy when intentionally listening to others. We turn away from dividing players and creators and instead towards each other as we advance and amplify joy together. This is the echo effect of gaming joy. Thank you for this honor tonight, and th thank you all for making the brave choice to put joy in the world. Thank you. <laughs>